Hi, this is Adrian Chen. Um, I'm the first year PhD student of Carnegie Mellon University uh, Land Technologies Institute, um, advised by Professor Alex Hoffman. And today I'm very honored to make a brief introduction about our recent work, TIM, a uh, temporary location module for video recognition. So uh, video understanding is an important computer vision test and has been adopted in various scenarios um, I assume the recent success of video understanding can be primarily attributed to the advancement of temporal modeling. However, it still remains challenging to effectively aggregate temporal information, especially uh, for distinguishing activities with various temporal lengths and complex spatial temporal relationships. Um, there are three main series of works to solve this problem. Uh, the earliest ones um, are established on the two stream 2D scenes in such framework, a uh, separate stream which relies on extra motion features, for example, optical flow or RGB diff is employed to incorporate the temporal information. However, these types of work have a very significant drawback. Firstly, motion information doesn't equal to uh, temporal information because motion information only reflect the uh, temporal changes within a very, very uh, short temporal window. And uh, secondly, the attraction of uh, motion information like optical flow is time consuming, and this limits the uh, application in real world. Uh, more recent works result to 3D convolution, and uh, 3D scene can directly model spatial and temporal information simultaneously. And the spatial temporal receptive field is progressively enlarged while stacking the 3D local convolution kernels. However, these methods also have problem. Um, 3D scenes usually contain too many parameters. Uh, this makes it very difficult to train and will be easily overfit. Uh, another series of words uh, result to use uh, factorize a 3D scene uh, into a 2D uh, spatial scene and uh, like uh, temporal modeling operation like 1D convolution, this is RTO plus 1D and TSM, this, that is uh, temporal shift. However, uh, both methods still have limitations. For example, for TSM, the shift values are manually designed and pixel agnostic uh, for 1D convolution. Uh, the stack, the 1D convolution has very limited temporal receptive field. Um, so to solve this, we propose a novel temporal relocation module uh, we call it TIM. Uh, TIM aims to relocate the spatial features along the temporal dimension to enable long-term temporal modeling in a spatial manner. So for example, here we have a 4D input uh, feature, C times T times H times W. For visualization, we just merge the H and W uh, degree to show it in a 3D view. So similar to TSM, we will have preserved channels and we only make temporal operation um, uh, part of the channels to be specific. That's the first of our phase channels. Um, so first we do channel split to select the operated channels, then we will use a 2D convolution kernel to learn the relocation values. Uh, you can notice the relocation matrix is spatial var, and the uh, operated features will be relocated on the temporal dimension pixel wisely. Um, so uh, the relocated features will then be concatenated with the preserved uh, features and we can find the output uh, feature size won't change. So it will make uh, TIM TI very easily uh, integrate to multiple uh, backbone networks. So let's uh, go deeper about the temporal um, relocation operation. So first let's start from 3D scene and 2D scene, similar to the previous visualization, we, uh, merge the H and W degree. So <coughs> here each uh, color represents a specific frame. And for 2D scene, it will only do a 2D convolution on the spatial dimension. So you can find in the blue plane, uh, the model will never get information from yellow plane or orange plane or green plane. So the temporal information are independent. And that's why it requires extra motion information for temporal modeling. However, in 3D scene, it will use a 3D convolution kernel and it will convolve on both 
uh, spatial dimension and uh, temporal degree. So through this way, you can find the uh, model can emit information from both uh, blue plane and yellow plane, or both yellow plane and orange plane. Uh, then let's move on to temporal shift operation. Uh, shift operation is very different from uh, 3D convolution that it doesn't use any convolution uh, architecture uh, to emit information on the temporal uh, degree. Uh, what it did is it will uh, shift uh, features within a specific channel, one frames forward or one frames backward. As you can see here, now the blue plane have information or have pixels from the yellow plane. So uh, when you do the channel-wise uh, adding of uh, 2D spatial convolution, uh, the model will meet information from uh, blue frames and yellow frames. So this way, 2D CN can also model temporal information. However, uh, temporal shift operation have lots of limitations. So firstly, um, uh, the temporal shift values are manually designed um which may be not the optimal uh value for different uh, actions or different videos and secondly you can notice all the pixels within a specific channel is shifted several frames forward or several frames backward uh, it's pixel agnostic actually some uh regions shouldn't be uh shifted at all so in another way, we can say temporal shift is just a special case of temporal relocate. For example, we showed here um, the temporal, uh, we will have a temporal relocation matrix which have exactly the same size of operated channels. Uh, you can see here uh, the uh, relocation values are pixel aware and uh, the model will be uh, relocated on the temporal dimension according to the values stored in the relocation matrix. For example, here, um, you can see in the blue plane, the pixels from both orange plane, yellow plane, and green plane. Thus, it means the QDC and now have an equivalent temporal set of field of um, the whole video clip. This is diff totally different from all previous works. So now the only problem left is how do we um, learn such kind of relocation metrics? Uh, to do this, um, unlike classification tests, which have a very clear target and criteria, it's pretty difficult to evaluate the performance of relocation. Thus, uh, we will directly use the final performance uh, action recognition loss to optimize it. Um, we explore the usage of uh, multiple contextual features uh, to calculate this. We explored a uh, temporal contextual feature, which is TTIM, and spatial temporal contextual feature, STIM, and channel temporal contextual feature, CTIM. So as is shown in the table here, uh, all three kinds of TIM outperforms uh, the baseline TSM, and CTIM performs the best on both rank one accuracy and rank five accuracy on kinetics. So for the later part, our performance, our reported performance will be based on CTIM without special uh, notification. Here we also show how to easily insert the TIM module into a backbone network. Uh, as you can see, we use ResNet50 as an example here. We will insert TIM within the residual structure uh, of each bottleneck block. Then uh, we need to evaluate how well our uh, model perform. So we compared with uh, SOTA uh, results on three large benchmarks. Here, uh, this table show uh, the comparison between our model and the SOTA sound kinetics. Mm, the first compartment contains works based on 3D scenes or mixture of 2D and 3D scenes. The next compartment includes works based on 2D scenes or 2 plus 1D scenes. Uh, although TSM is inferior to ISCSN and IPCSN, however, uh, these two methods implement a much heavier backbone and use longer clips for inference. When compared with the baseline, uh, TIM surpassed TSM with 0.9 rank one accuracy with only uh, one of their samples per video. When increased to two of their samples per video, uh, it will improve 1.3 rank one accuracy. 
uh, on something something V2, uh, TIM also achieves a state of the art performance. And uh, according to the provided results, TIM is inferior to TPM plus TSM, which implements a much heavier 3D structure and it achieves comparable results against the pen light on the validation set. However, uh, pen light will use five time samples for inference. Uh, HM DB51, we can find uh, TIM have very noticeable um, improvements and it achieves the best around this uh, sort of methods. So we have shown uh, TIM shows priority against the special case TSM. However, we still want to know if our model really learned the temporal related regions. And uh, we will also want to know how much temporal set field it will assign to these regions. So we visualize the learned uh, temporal rotation matrix and red regions represent the pixels assigned uh, large temporal relocation values and blue regions represent uh, those aligned limited temporal relocation values. For better visualization, we will use the uh, absolute value of the learned temporal relocation grid. Actually, the value can be both negative or positive. Negative, re negative represents like frames backward and uh, positive will be frames forward. Yeah, so as shown here, we can find the model correctly recognized uh, the temporal related regions like uh, the man's face, his hand, and the uh, short glass regions. However, for the uh, background, um, it will, it's a, they are aligned very limited temporal receptive field. This is correspond to uh, our personal experience. Here we can show many, many more visualization results, and uh, we can notice uh, the temporal relative regions are different from uh, dynamic regions. For example, in the Friday example, uh, our model will assign a significant larger temporal receptive field for the egg in the pan. However, if it's just the dynamic regions as shown in the optical flow, both the pan and the egg are dynamic regions. So it shows the priority of the temporal rotation matrix uh, than optical flow. So we mentioned we did a specially uh, spatial web designer. So we want to know if such kind of spatial web design uh, works. Um, to do this, uh, we specially study the function of learning temporal rotation values pixel wisely. We trained a spatial agnostic TIM module for comparison on kinetics. You can find uh, the spatial web TIM significantly outperforms uh, special agnostic TIM. And we also list the top 10 actions that TIM significantly outperforms. Actually here in the visualization, uh, there are the top eight actions we can find. Um, uh, the majority of them have a very significant difference of temporal relation in regions. Then we want to show the capability of long-term temporal modeling. First, we will discuss, introduce sparse sampling and dense sampling. Sparse sampling, the video will be uh, evenly split into N segments. And from each segment, here's the N is four. From each segment, one frame will be randomly selected to form uh, the sample for training or inference. So in this sample, the temporal receptor field will be equals to uh, the length of the whole video clip. There will be, it will be pretty challenging for the model to model such uh, long temporal information. In dense sampling, however, the uh, video clip will be firstly um, separate into N segments, N equals to three here, and uh, sorry, M, M equals to three here, and M frames will be randomly selected from each segment. Uh, so you can see here, it has three samples to represent a single video clip and um, a temporal receptive field uh, within each sample just uh, equals to the length of the segment. So it's much, much more sh uh, shorter. And you can see here when transferring from dense sampling to sparse sampling, TSM and TA have very significant drops through points very close. And TIM, however, is much more robust and there is only 1.5 drop when uh, transferring from dense sampling to sparse sampling. 
So the conclusion of our contributions are uh, we propose a new perspective of modeling temporal information, and uh, it enables 2D CA model spatial uh, temporal information with a global temporal set of field and enhance the long-term temporal modeling capability. We also propose a temporal rotation module, which takes a difference of optimal temporal receptive uh, among pixels or regions in your account and enables a temporal receptive field for each location to be determined adaptively through relocation operations. That's all. Thanks for watching.